Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 17, where we're going to be going over uh, the sliding doors concept in CSS. So let's take a look at the example we're going to be looking at. Uh, the sliding doors, uh, I'm going to try to sum it up here, is like uh, for a page element that you need to use background images for, but you want them to be you want that element to uh it's a one image isn't going to cut it because that image you want to be expandable uh so watch as i these are just regular buttons here in safari with regular text inside those buttons and watch as i bump up and down the text the top button is a is a the the graphic behind that button is a is an image and uh and it just stays the same size i just cut out a background image drop some text over it and uh it doesn't expand but the bottom image uh you can see the button is smaller but it uh as i bump up the text size the button grows now that's not just that's just that's that can't happen with uh with a single image cuz it's um images just aren't expandable like that regularly now this concept of sliding doors is not new. In fact, there's an article in 2003 on a list apart about how to do sliding doors. It's uh it's a uh, been around for a long time. It's kind of a stopgap solution to a, a weird problem. And it's kind of it's it's kind of on its way out the door to be perfectly honest with you. A lot of the newer browsers uh, use a zooming technology. Even even Nye 7 I think, has some zooming in it, so that uh, when you bump up text size, the images will bump up too. So you really this this technique is kind of useless for that. As well as in the specs for CSS3, there's multiple background images. So the kind of the extra hooks and stuff that we're going to need to accomplish this aren't going to be necessary in CSS3. However, I still think this is a interesting CSS technique. It should be something that's a part of your CSS bag of tricks. So let's uh, get started in showing you these two examples, how I built them and how they work. So here I have Photoshop open and this is where I designed that background for that button. Pretty simple, just a rounded rectangle shape here and with a couple of layer styles applied, just a stroke and a gradient overlay to make that button how it is. So let's cut it out and build our first button in the traditional way. A uh, way that we can crop this down to exactly the size we need here is to use the trim command and based on the top left pixel color which is going to be white it'll just crop down exactly what we need so that's kind of a handy way to get the button we need. We'll save it out as a background ping and we'll save it let's see and we'll call it button background and we'll take note while we're here that it's 162 pixels wide by 33 pixels tall. Now in the finder, this is my working window here. That's the image I just saved out. And we have uh, HTML and CSS files here. That's all we need. <clears throat> and we'll open this up in TextMate. Let's take a look at the index file, just a title, normal stuff, sitting in a page wrap. Let's write the markup for that button first. Um, we don't care where it links to, but we are going to give it a class of button. We might have other anchor elements on our page for a menu and stuff, but this is specifically a button. So let's give it a unique class and say, give it the text for that link. <clears throat> and that's all we're going to need. That's the markup for the button as clean as we can make it. Here's some basic page setup, nothing too interesting here, but let's write the CSS for that button an anchor link with a class of button we're going to need it to in order to get make sure that that whole graphic is shown as we cut it out it's going to we're going to need to make it a block element so that we can set height and width uh it was 33 pixels tall and 162 pixels wide then we can give it that background background in our images folder button background Thing. And to be certain, let's just make sure that it doesn't repeat. Uh, we need to f finish out typographically and all kinds of stuff for this button. So let's just keep going here. We want to make sure that the text stays in the center. Uh, we're going to need to bump it down a little bit so that it kind of visually sits uh, in the middle of that button. Unfortunately, there's no super great vertical align method here, so we'll just 
fake it and say, <clears throat> give it some padding up top. Uh, we'll make it white. We'll make sure there's no underline. And since we're using Safari, we can do a little uh, 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 progressive enhancement here with the text and even give it a shadow. This will pretty much only work in Safari, I think. Uh, give it some offset in black, and I think that should do it. Well, maybe make it a, give it a font size so we can control it that way. And save it, and let's open that up in Safari and see what we get. Refresh, and we have uh, our button. There it is unglamorous and this is basically what you saw before we can resize the text and the graphic stays doesn't uh, expand obviously we haven't gotten to that part yet but that's just a simple button it works so let's use that as our starting point for making another button in the same style only we'll give it a different class we're gonna call this an expanding button So that's the markup for our expanding button. Then we'll use what we've already done here and start with our expanding button. The deal, though, with sliding doors is, and this is why uh, it's going to what CS3 is going to obsolete, but we still kind of need it for now, especially if you want it to work in you know kind of today's browsers, is an extra hook in our HTML to get to get the because we're going to be needing two background images here, which we'll get to in just a second, but we're going to need two, so we're going to need two hooks in our markup. So we're going to have to come back over here, and we'll use kind of the default inline element, a span. We're going to need that in our styling, <clears throat> which you'll see in a minute. So now with an expanding button, we'll change the class name, expanding, expanding. Well, we're, don't gonna, we're not going to want a width because we want the width to be flexible. And because it needs, it's going to behave like that, we're going to need to float this thing to the left. And the reason we're doing that is so that the width of it isn't automatically as wide as its parent element. If we didn't float this to the left, uh, this really wouldn't work. Uh, we'll leave the background like it is for a minute. We can That can stay. Uh, one thing that we didn't do is just give it for both of our buttons. Let's make it bold so we can see that shadow and stuff a little better. Let's just add this in somewhere. Um, color, white, shadow. Okay, that's cool. What we're going to need to do then is style up the, the span. Actually, you know what? Let's take a little break and go to Photoshop. And um, I don't want to write the styling for something that you don't know why I'm writing it for yet. So what we're going to need, the theory here of what we're trying to do is we're going to have most of the background image be part of the left and then because the span is like inside the span is really gonna sit on top of the a block that we've set up and so we can apply the right side of the background image to that span and that'll kinda work the magic so let's make the right half first we're just gonna cut off a little use the crop tool and cut off a little bit of this thing for the right and save that as a button background right and then we're going to need the left. So let's back up in our history palette and crop this down on the left, getting rid of that. Actually, what we're going to need to do is make it longer than that. We want this thing to be able, as, as wide expandable as possible, not to be limited by this background image. So what we can do is expand the canvas to maybe like 250, like as wide as we're going to want it for sure. Let's drag this over to the left. And... Uh, use our pen tool let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing for sure so pen tool and press the command key so we get the white arrow and select all these uh, pen points here we'll zoom back out to a regular view then we can hold shift and drag this out beyond the edge of it so that we have enough left background that we're going to want for our expando. And we'll save that as button background left. 
So let's jump back over to the CSS quick and apply <clears throat> on the expanding button. The anchor link itself is going to take care of the left background and the span. We'll start writing this. Expanding button span is going to be in charge of the right half. Not half, but the right part of that image. <clears throat> the span is by default an inline element, so to get the height and stuff we want, we're going to want to make sure to make that display block, block as well. And uh, we're going to need to do a little positioning on both of these background images. Let's say that, like I said, this is going to be the left part of it. And let's make it sure it hangs out on the top. And this is going to be the right part of it on top. No repeat. And uh, instead of having the padding, the padding there would push the span down too. So let's not apply the padding in there. Let's apply it in here. It was six pixels, right? And then we're going to need uh, uh, some left and right padding to make sure that the text stays away from the edges of this button. We'll make it like eight pixels and none for the bottom. If you just do three, that's top, left, right, bottom. So a little shorthand. And it needs a height too. The same height as the span. So let's save that and jump back over to Safari and hopefully we'll get our... Uh-oh. Well, that's a start anyway. Let's troubleshoot. Okay, here's the problem. I just forgot to put the full file name at the end of this. Now if we go back to Safari, there it is. There's our expandable button. And now we can you can watch the magic as we bump up and even down. It'll expand as wide as we need it. Um, so this is a button that has a set height. Because of those rounded corners on the bottom, we need a specific set height. This technique isn't quite as popular with buttons as it is with something like tabs that don't necessarily have a, a, a set height to them. They can grow as vertically tall as they need to as, as well as... as horizontally so it's not the best thing for a button as you can see if, if you go too big it's it's busting out too and, and you know who's to say which is better but it's the theory here that counts so that is the theory of sliding doors so uh, towards the end here, I always like to mention our great sponsor psd2html.com which is a uh, 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 a service which will take your Photoshop documents or in a variety of other formats actually and convert them into HTML and CSS websites. They do a great job with it. Uh, speaking of sliding doors, if you were to have a button in your template in Photoshop that looks like it was the kind of thing that would, would benefit and uh, it would be nice to have a sliding doors effect on it, you can either, you know, chances are even if you don't mention it, they'll ask you about it or uh, just make sure you mention it when you first uh, when you first do the ordering, and you know they'll make it sliding doors. That's cake work for these people, so uh, no big deal there. Uh, like I've said before, they don't just do static designs. They can take your uh, they'll take your design and they can make it in uh, down here WordPress, Movable Pipe, Drupal, Joomla, content management systems like that. It's a pretty affordable service, so make sure to check out psd to html.com for your photoshop to uh css cons you know <laughs> needs uh one of the other things i wanted to mention is i've been getting a kick out of this twitter thing lately i don't know how many of y'all use twitter but on twitter i am chris coyer so if you want to follow me and keep in touch that way i'm not the kind of guy who uh twitters about what I ate for breakfast and lunch and where I'm going for drinks after work and stuff, I realize that we're not all in the same geographic location, so I tend to keep my tweets to, uh, you know, web design stuff and cool general knowledge kind of stuff. So if you want to keep in touch with me, definitely you can do that at twitter.com slash chriscoyer. You can just follow me. I'll follow you, and we'll have fun. See you later. Bye.